Hi everyone, welcome to your video tutorial, one of many. This week we're going to be having a look at InDesign, uh, how it can be used to lay out your presentation panels and then how you might use it for your final folio as well. So it's a relatively simple program, uh, similar in ways of how Photoshop and Illustrator and a lot of the Adobe software is set out. So up, up the top you've got your commands, objects, uh, window, all the sorts of things that you will need for your workspace. On the left, down in this column, you've got your tools set out. And then over on the right is what's happening in your workspace, just like Photoshop with your page, your layers, and links. And we'll go through some of these things in a second. So let's get started. First, we want to go File, New, and Document. Uh, and even if you're just working on a couple of layouts, document just means that you're going to be working on uh, some sheets for printing. So, for you guys, you're going to want two pages, um, and your size, now A1 for you is not going to be there, so you're going to have to type it in. So we know our sheet is 594 millimeters by 841 millimeters high. Um, our orientation, we want to keep that at uh, portrait for this example. You can change your margins, your bleed, all those sorts of things for when you're printing. Bleed allows your um, colors to go over the edges so that when it's cut down it looks perfect and everything is nice and smooth. But for now I think it's fine just to have your number of pages and your size and we'll click OK. So this is the first sheet and you see the second sheet down under here, if I zoom out a bit. So Alt and scroll is your zoom as per normal. Um, I've got my two sheets here. So some people get a bit frustrated by this when you've only got two sheets, you want to see them side by side, and that's fine. If you come up to pages, all of your page controls are here. So I can right click on page two, duplicate the spread, and now I've got my two pages side by side. I can work on these two, and when I'm finished later, I can just delete this top spread. Uh, ready to go. You've also got master sheets up here, so if you click on these, anything that you do to these sheets will appear on all of your sheets uh, from that point onwards. So for if example in your folio later on you wanted to have page numbers, you wanted to have your title, or your name or a graphic or anything that you wanted to repeat on certain pages in certain places, this is the place where you would do that. So let's go back to your normal sheets. So that's how pages works. Let's add some images so that we can um, start to get some examples of how to do things. So I've just got two random images here. Now InDesign wants you to click on the page where you want these things to go. So for example, it needs to be placed in the document. So there are my two images now. I've just placed them on the sheet and it's starting to get cluttered already. I've got two images on the page but there's lots of lines everywhere. Now if I press control or command colon that's going to get rid of the bleed line so I can see what my sheet looks like and then if I press command or control H that's going to get rid of those blue lines from outside the edge of my uh, images so I can see everything nice and clear. Now that we've got something on the sheet we've seen that they've come up over here on the images um, on the master, oh, sorry, on the pages that shows where these images are and what's going on. So once you start to add more and more um, spreads to your document when you're creating your folio for example you'll be able to scroll through here and see which pages you're onto. You'll be able to select both pages and move them before or after other documents and things like that as well in the pages link. So pages are very important. The next thing we want to have a look at is the links. So InDesign is quite different to Photoshop in Illustrator in that it doesn't use the full amount of memory required to have all of your high-res images on the sheet. So in briefer terms, the images are stored in a file somewhere. So this file, uh, InDesign remembers where they're located and uses only the pixels required for your specific sheet size to have that image there, but all the memory is still stored back in this sheet which basically means that you'll have a much smaller file size when you go to save and print later. So too many times in first and second year before I used InDesign I used Illustrator 
for my presentations and it wound up that my files would become like two, three and four gigabytes and would end up crashing and I'd have to start the folio again or start from an earlier point. Um, so really InDesign's your best way to be. Now with that said, you need to make sure that all of your files stay in one known place. So I've called this one InDesign example, but everything that needs to be in this document needs to be in the same folder and needs to stay there. So the place where you save your InDesign document should be the same place that all of the images and all of the text and things that are in the document are saved. So, for example, this is what happens if you were to take one of those images out. So, let's just say, for example, that image has now been moved out of that folder. I go back into InDesign. I'm in my links panel up here. And then I can see this red little question mark missing. And I've got to double click to, to re-link it. So what's going to happen is when I go to print this later, it's going to come up all square and pixelated and it's going to look terrible and everybody knows what happened. So you can either right click, relink and show InDesign where it is now. So I know now it's on the desktop and here it is. Uh, or the better way to do it is move it back to the folder that it should be in and InDesign should automatically find it. It has done. So the best way to do it is to make sure you keep your things in the right folder. Okay, so that's your pages and your links. Now, the fun stuff. So InDesign's a little bit different to Photoshop. Um, you've got a lot more control over what your images do. So the outer layer, the blue layer outside the image, this line here, allows you to control and clip and do all sorts of cool things directly onto the image. If I double click on the image, however, it shows me where the real image is and this red line is where I do my sizing and my changing. So if, for example, I wanted all my images to be the same ratio and the same size so it looks nice and consistent across the layout, I could make them all to be that same size. Here we go. I'm just going to quickly do this. My images are now the same size, but they might not be the same size when they start off so this is why we would do this then once I'm in the image I wanna go right click fitting and I wanna fit the content to the frame there we go so now it's fit in nicely um, oh sorry I wanna fit the content to the frame proportionally so fit content proportionally so now it's moved it fit content proportionally and now we're, we're happy days so we've still got this frame edge here. If you wanted to, you could bring both of them out to where they sit into the frame by holding Shift and Alt, and then they would sit nicely. And you can choose where these images sit within that frame just by double-clicking, bringing up the red, and dragging it around. And that's how the images work. So InDesign, just like Illustrator and Photoshop, has rulers up the top, and if you can't see them, it's Control-R or Command-R to bring your rulers up. If you drag down from where the rulers are, it'll give you a series of guides so that you can make sure your things, your images or your text or whatever you want are positioned in the right space. Uh, InDesign will also give you these nice green guides and I believe Photoshop does the same. Now as well, your smart guides to make sure everything is lining up. It's really important when we're doing layouts that things do line up. So, for example, if we picked the edge of this image we would want our text and things to line up along that edge down here uh, and then this would be equally our right edge for example so everything would fit within this column so just the same as architecture and designing a building having things line up where they should line up and a bit of organization in the aesthetic so it doesn't seem so hit and miss now Texts are the same as images. We want to make sure that we do our text in Microsoft Word or something similar so that everything is making sense. You write it all outside of InDesign. Then you can do your spell checking and everything. Uh, particularly important with your documents so that you keep all your bits of text separate so that they are nice and organized. So same thing with a text document. We just drag and drop into InDesign and then it's going to ask for placement. And then from that point, because I'm on an A1 sheet, it's gone nice and small. I'm just going to change the size. I'm just going to change the size of this. 
and then it's going to conform to the sheet and there we are that's that same abstract that I was working with before now you notice this little red cross that's down here um, that's telling me that there's more text on that document that I've brought in and that I need to press that and then decide where I'm going to place the extra bit of text um, and so there that's that brought in now the extra bit of text, that little red cross is gone and I can line up the things. And I just clean this up now so I can get rid of these superfluous spaces and you'll notice as well that these two boxes are connected together so if I was to press enter in here or if I was to delete some of these spaces out of here they'll start to line up so depending on where you arrange your box it will tell InDesign how to place things. And same thing, I want everything nice and lined up. We might want these to sit on the edge, just as our pictures do. And then we might want these to be the same ratio as our text. Sorry, as our image. And then we can come up to our... If we double click inside this text box, we can select it all and then justify it so that it fits nicely as a text block in line with my images. Do the same thing again down below. Justify to the left and these are fitting in nicely now. So as a graphic we can see this column is starting to work together. Now your fonts and your text are actually really important in how they position on the page uh, and you should pay particular attention to how people have done it in the past and sizes, even though it's on an A1, you might be standing back from it. It's really important not to have anything probably bigger than a size 10 point for your body paragraph. And then for your things like your titles, you might want to have a 15 point I've got there at the moment. Or if it's particularly important, a 17. Or there's something like your major title across the whole sheet, you might have a 21. But I wouldn't go too crazy, and I certainly wouldn't be using any silly fonts. So I might get a bold italic, something like that, just for the abstract. Nice and clean. This font is a standard font in InDesign. It's Minion Pro, um, and widely used last year amongst all the graduates. Probably 75% of people using it, either that or Helvetica. Uh, so that's your fonts and your graphics for InDesign. Uh, some other important things to remember. Try to also think about the concept when we're working on our layout. So we want to be able to read across it as if we're reading a book. We should be able to read across your panels and understand what it is that you're trying to get across in your work. So whether that be from a title on the left page and some text and then a few diagrams and some site plans and things giving us a broad understanding of what's happening. And then you might venture off onto the right page and you might have, for example, a big money shot size image. Let's just multiply this one by 200. So you might have a big image sitting on the right hand page and some other smaller drawings talking about what's going on but really getting into the emotion then the sensation and the experience of what the architecture is like so it should be a journey and a sense of um, mystery and reward as we're going through the project take things away from us give things to us and really treat us like we're clients or uh, observers going through your building as we're going across your sheets it should be more than just information on a page it should be architecture um, also remember that InDesign, Photoshop and Illustrator like each other very much so don't be afraid to do all of your Photoshop work in Photoshop and then just drag and drop your Photoshop file straight into InDesign and that means if you do continue working on it later all you would need to do is find that Inde oh, sorry, Photoshop file right click on it and relink um, or update link uh, once you're finished working on some more Photoshop. And that means you don't have to set out your layout again. All you need to do is update your links, uh, but you can keep working on things outside of InDesign. Now that's just a very brief understanding of what InDesign's doing. Obviously if you have any questions, feel free to chuck them up on Blackboard and we'll um, see you in class and you can ask any questions then. That's all from me. Enjoy InDesign. Good luck with your submissions everyone and don't forget to have fun. Thanks very much. Bye.